Greetings homies, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to create a replacement gear part from scratch using only native tools in Blender. So this part was given to me by a work colleague, apparently someone dropped something and this was an internal part that snapped and they wondered if I could recreate this and then 3D print it. And, well, hopefully the answer is yes. Now because this is a pretty much perfect geometric shape, I'm not going to bother 3D scanning this. So I'm just going to use some calipers to take the main measurements that I need. I literally have said that about 10 times and edited it out because apparently I can't say major measurements. So that was just a annoyingly long part of this video process. But anyway, as you can see, I'm using calipers to take all of these measurements. And don't forget that if you've got a caliper set, that most of them have this ability on the back to actually take depth measurements as well, which I'm using for part of this too. Now, normally I don't make sketches for my designs. I find them a little bit of a waste of time, mostly because I can't draw. I'm absolutely awful at drawing. It looks horrible. It is very much not a good way for me to visualize my designs. I sort of imagine them and actually use Blender as the sketching process. But I have done for this, and you can see this god awful diagram that I've created. It might not make sense to you, but it does make sense to me. So let's start creating this. Now, before we go any further, it is probably worth me mentioning that Blender can create gears using one of the internal add ons that it comes with it. Now, we have mentioned this previously in a video, it was about four or five months ago, and you can do really cool things with this if you want to, and change things like radius and stuff, and how far in and out every single bit of this goes. So, have a look at that video if you are interested in this, but it does have some issues with it, mostly to do with the angling of these parts, because the teeth aren't, well, flat, they come out in a radius. So, this isn't going to be perfect for my uses, and also because of the additional shapes, this is going to be a little bit annoying. So I'm not going to use that. So what we'll do is talk through this process, and we'll go through each stage. So what I'm going to do is start with a major shape. So I'm going to start with the overall circle, which is 3 millimeters in depth. So let's bring in a cylinder. Let's up these vertices to about 256, so it's really rounded. We need a depth of 3 millimeters. Notice that I'm using blender units and I don't change this to millimeters because for 3D printing, as we export this, it will interpret these blender units as millimeters. I've also got a video going through that and kind of proving that it's the case because some people get really angry about this stuff. I don't really quite get it. But anyway, if you want to have a look at that and tell me I'm wrong, feel free. There's a link in the description to that one as well. And then we need our radius and the overall diameter is 14.4. I'm going to divide that by two because we want the radius. So here is our shape, good to go. Now we've got another bit that comes out the top of this, so let's just shift A, mesh, and I'm going to bring in another cylinder, and again, this was 3 millimeters in depth. But the diameter of this is 10.2, and then obviously we need the radius, so let's divide that by 2. Now, what we're going to need to do, let's just G and Z and bring this up, and we're going to want to place this perfectly on top. So we're going to use Snap Base, which again comes with Blender, so G, B, and then we can select where we're snapping to, and I just want any of the edges or vertices along here, and I'm going to press Z to lock it in the Z axis and bring it down to here. Now we could Boolean this together at this point, and that will probably work if we use an exact Boolean, but I'm just going to grab these G and Z them down so there's a bit of overlap and we're not going to have any problems. Click, shift click, and as long as you've got ball tool enabled, so edit preferences, type in ball, make sure ball tool is there, we can press control and plus, and that's going to Boolean it together. Let's click here and then H to hide that. Then we need the internal hole, so once again, mesh and cylinder. Keep all of the vertex count the same. I'm keeping this quite high because I'm not going to use sub D or anything, and I want it to be nicely rounded. So 256 is my high number for rounding, and then I halve it each time depending on what I want. If this was going to be really big, then I'd probably double that as well. So I'm just going to put the depth up to something that's way deeper than we need, so something like 10. And then we'll take the radius, so 6.2 is the diameter, and again divide that by 2. Click Control and minus, and then we can click on that and H to hide it. And we've got basically most of this shape done. Now we just need to do the teeth. So let's come into the top down view, Shift A, Mesh, and I'm going to bring in a cube. Now I need this to have the right depth, so it needs to be the same thickness, so let's put this to 3. And then we're going to just work out just the shapes that we need. So I'm going to use the M panel for this, come to Item. And then we've got all of our dimensions here that we can change as we need to. 
So I'm just gonna G and then Y and bring this up here. This is where this tooth is gonna be. And I'll put it in place properly in a little bit once we've finished with our dimensions. So on the X axis, so that's going this way, I need this to be two millimeters. So let's change the X to two. On the Y, I need to have this with a total length of 2.95. That might actually be me slightly mismeasuring it. There's a good chance that, that was actually three, but either way, this will work. And I've been told that I don't need to be sub millimeter perfect for this. That should be probably more than fine. And also the fact that this is gonna 3D print and add a slight little bit of width to it is gonna mean that that's okay. And then what we need to do is just add in an edge loop. So what I'm gonna do is firstly make sure, I'll go into edge mode, is make sure that our auto merge vertices is turned off. Then I press Ctrl and R, click, and drag all the way down to this edge. So at the moment we've got our edge that we created, or our edge loop, on top of the edge that's furthest towards the negative Y. Then I can just G and then Y, and now you can see in the top left hand corner that we've got the measurement of how far up this is going and I know that I want this to be 1.5. I didn't bother taking the measurement of the top half because I don't need to. Obviously we could maths it out but that's going to be fine. The other thing that I need is to change, if we go into face mode, this face here. At the moment this is too wide and we can see this with the cubes that are here. We've got slightly thicker ones there and there. You can see that if I zoom out, though I'm not sure how YouTube's compression will deal with that. We need to make this one. I should say, these modes that I'm going into, or this Pi menu, this is from Machine Tools. You don't need to use this, I just use this for my videos. Well, one, I actually just prefer it, I think it's faster. But I find it more useful in videos so people can see what mode I'm going into. And we're just going to scale this down. Now we could actually, if we wanted to, select these vertices in X-ray mode and G and then X and move this along 0.5 millimeters. And then we could do the same the other side. So that is one option. And in many instances, that's probably gonna be easier. Now in this instance, because this is two millimeters wide and we want it to be one, what I'm gonna do is S to scale it in the X axis. And you can see this number, if I go all the way in, isn't in millimeters. It is as a proportion of its original size. And well, we need this to be one millimeter wide and it was originally two millimeters, so I could just 0 0.5, and that's as a ratio, so half, and then that's gonna be correct there. Now, at this point, we've got our tooth, and we're gonna do the same thing again. So object mode, we're just gonna bring this perfectly to the side, or perfectly to the edge. So G, B, and I want this perfect vertex. I'm gonna press Y to lock it to the Y axis, and drag it to this edge. Let's just double check that's exactly on where we want it to be, and it is. So we've got that there. Now, I actually need 14 of these teeth. There's a few ways we could do this. The first way, which I wouldn't recommend now because we can now do this for free in a much better way, but if you don't have Blender 4.1, I think it is, and onwards, you might want to do this the old way, and that is to take our transform pivot point, turn it to the 3D cursor, Shift and D, press R, so it's rotating around the 3D cursor, just click somewhere, and know that we need 360, because there's 360 degrees in a circle, divided by 14, and that will get our distance. And then we can shift an R, and 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 shift an R. So this works, it's perfectly fine, and we'll have 14 teeth that way. But I don't think it's worth doing it that way, because we don't need to anymore. We've got a free add-on called ND, and ND is amazing. If you don't have it, go to Get Extensions in Blender 4.2 and type in ND, you're gonna to have to hit the install button there and install it, and then go to add-ons, let's get rid of where it says ball, find ND, somewhere down here, it's all in alphabetical order, and activate that, save your preferences, and then you're good to go. And all you need to do is click, shift click, and then to get the full menu system, you press shift and two, and we want to replicate this in a circular array. So importantly, this is going to do the object that we've clicked, and then we shift click on the object we want it to rotate around. Now before we do this finally, which is why I've come out of this, we need to check that our objects have the scale as one. In fact, actually, we need to check the object that's gonna be scaled around has a scale of one. The other one actually you can get away without it being scaled as one, but I'd like to do that anyway. So I'm gonna control an A and apply the scale, click, shift click on the object that I want it to be rotated around, and we're gonna shift, to replicate circular array, and you'll notice that we get this cool menu, and it says that we've got a count of two. 
And if I scroll up, we get four, then six, then eight, and so on, and we want 14 teeth. Now you can also do really cool things with this, like if I press Alt, you can have it so that this doesn't go all the way around the circle, so you can do funky things like that, but we want this going to 360, so let's bring this to 360 and let go. You can also do offsets and things like that if I hold down control, so you can rotate things round if you need to and change the direction of that. Let's put that to zero as well. And you can change the rotation axis and displacement and stuff like that. But we don't need to for this, we're just gonna click. And then we've got our teeth. We're gonna shift click on our object, control and plus to use ball tool. And then we can unselect that and H to hide the outer piece. And we've got our gear. Now, I'm gonna be very clear about this. If you're doing this and you care about quads, Look away now, because I'm doing this for 3D printing, and quads make no difference. So if we come into our modifiers, and we go to apply all, or you can apply them individually if you don't have that. If we go into vertex mode, this is quite messy. Now, we can fix this. There's a number of ways of fixing this. Firstly, we can go into edge mode, select this, and we can start dissolving some of these, and oddly, some of them will dissolve and some of them won't, which is interesting. So that's one way of fixing this. We can also come in manually and start deleting things out like edges and we might have to reinstigate an edge which is all very annoying but we can do this if we want to to be perfectly honest for 3d printing you don't need to you can just export it as it is and it will be fine if you do have an add-on called hardops which is an amazing add-on but it is paid for but i do want to mention it just so no one in the comments goes you didn't talk about this you can press q operations and clean mesh if you do that, it's gonna clean everything very, very nicely and end up with a really, really good looking mesh. It's gonna be very nice and clean, full of engons, but I don't care about engons, it's for 3D printing. The other thing we could do if we just undo this is you could press A, X, go to limited dissolve, and we're gonna to need to get that max angle down to like 0 0.1 or something like that so that we don't lose any of our detailing. So that's an option as well if you want to stick with something that's free and you want to clean this up. But this only is working because these are perfectly flat surfaces. On certain other objects, this wouldn't work. But either way, we've got our gear. Let's file, export, and STL. And we need to click selection only so it doesn't export all of the cubes and other objects that we've been using to create this. And we'll just call this, I don't know, custom gear, and then export this. And with that, you can bring your STL into whatever 3D printing program you generally prefer. I use Creality because I've got a Creality Ender 3 V3. And we can print that out, and this will do a very nice job of it because actually it's a very easy printer to dial in. In fact, I didn't really do any dialing in it, just works straight out of the box. If you do want to see a video on that, again, there's a link in the description. And if you're looking for a 3D printer, this is one that I would heartily recommend as a relatively budget 3D printer that will just work out of the box. And with that finished, we've got our replacement gear, which is going to nicely fit into the place of the original. I did print this in standard PLA because I was told this wasn't a part that's gonna be taking a lot of pressure or force, and normally it wouldn't be having any sort of real pressure applied to it. So this should be perfectly fine. Hopefully you found that process interesting. I'd had a couple of people asking me about how I'd replicate certain pieces, and this just seemed a nice project that sort of fell in my lap that would seem a good one to show that off. If you did find it interesting, it'd be appreciated if you hit the like button. It means other people are going to find it easier to find the video if they're looking for something similar. And if you want to see more videos like this, you're welcome to either subscribe to the channel, or if you really want to support the channel further, you can head over onto the Patreon page where you get these videos ad-free, a week early, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.